Hey, Paul here. I'd like to thank our premier sponsor for this episode, Cisco Systems, building a bridge to possible and their newest platform to power an inclusive future for all. For more information, go to Cisco.com. Hi, welcome to Business Brains in the Bottom Line. I am your host, Paul Delegro, and my guest today is Terry Murray, president of Prescriptive Data Solutions. Welcome to the show, Terry. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so Terry, you're actually my first two-time guest, by the way. You should feel, uh, you know, honored. I feel very special <laughs> to be the first two-time guest. Yeah. So Terry, uh, the reason why I wanted to have you on today um, with Prescriptive Data Solutions, you have a new concept that you'd like to roll out, new uh, new business uh, venture part of Prescriptive Data Solutions called Phase 2. That's correct. That you wanted to uh, kind of uh, talk about today. So what actually is Phase 2? So um, Phase 2 is a concept that, it's actually something that we've been building towards since we initially founded the company. So when we initially started doing the traditional consulting, the reseller and all those sorts of things. Um, but we had this idea based on just some of the things that we were seeing. So one of the first things that we saw was that um, people were looking for a new bargain in how they earn a living. So for me, for the most part, growing up, it was, Okay, I'm going to go find a place. Who's going to pay me the most money to get the job here? Then I'm going to work as hard as I can, as smart as, as, smart as I can, hopefully get promotions and kind of move up. And then... Yeah, the traditional way. That absolutely. We've all done it. Absolutely. Yeah. And if I if it didn't work out, I go someplace else and I repeat and do the same thing. And um, there's a lot of sacrifice in that. And there's a lot of just uh, personal drive to this end state all the time. And I think one of the things about some of the younger generations it's a little bit more prevalent in is that they're looking at those things a little bit harder. They're not willing to just say, I'm going to go blindly down this path. They're, they're taking a look and saying, what is it really that I want from my life in general? What are all the things that matter to me? Um, and I think they also look at what are the things that they feel like this is what I'm contributing to the company that I get paid for, but you have a lot of folks looking for, and then there are other things that are, that are for me that I do that aren't part of that, that that's not something right. that I'm doing for the company. So we looked at that and thought, okay, number one, I think there's folks that are looking for a different way to kind of uh, earn a living. Um, and then we also saw how people were managed in most of the organizations that we worked with and didn't really care for it, right? We, we felt like when you look at the people that are out there, and in particular, the people that really contribute and the people that are self-starter and all that, they don't need some of the things that traditional management was always trying to put on them. The most common one that I always talk about is for salespeople and the quarterly business review, Yeah, right? That's one of my favorite ones is when I talk to somebody about the phase two concept, I, maybe they say, well, I, I can talk to you next week, but I've got my QBR this week. Yeah, I know. And when I see them, I'm always like, how'd that QBR go? Did you get all this insight and now you're going to blow it out? And they never do, right? Because the QBR isn't really for you. It's for the, the management. Managers. And that's just the way that it's been. Yeah, and we thought, and, you know, it's like everyone puts lipstick on a pig on those things, right? Yeah. Everyone dresses up their business. And I wouldn't say they lie, but they right. kind of, they put on a show for their bosses and then right. whew, got, got, got past that QBR. Let's go to the next one. And it really know? doesn't have much of an impact. And, and you also, t they tend to apply it across the whole group. And I, I've always felt like, you know what, you've got some folks in any organization that really what they need is enablement. They don't need to be managed. They don't need somebody right. to tell them what to do. They need to be enabled. And then when they need assistance or where they need guidance, you need to be available. So the whole concept was how do we attract some of the, the best technical minds out there or technical professionals, whether it be sales, project management, right. technical resources, and enable them to go out and be successful and give them the ability to make decisions about what it is that I want. How much do I want to work? What do I want to work on? And who do I want to work with? So it, it kind of encompasses all those things. Now, is this something you've been thinking about for a while? I mean, because it sounds like you put a lot of thought into this. It, it is. Like I said, we, we started having the concept or having the conversations very early on. Now, the way that uh, Prescriptive was initially founded, 
it was pretty much we had to go out and start bringing in money immediately. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that was bills, right? that was the primary focus. Who wants uh, you know needs us to come out and do some work for them? Has some solutions they want to buy. But this was kind of in the background that we wanted to build this out. And so you start going through all the concepts and working through how would you actually structure this? How would it actually work? And then once you feel like, okay, I've gotten through all those things, in our case, we we have to build a platform that then enables right. these types of things to happen. And so that's that's taken some time. And I should add that the way that it initially started it's evolved over time sure. too, right? Yeah, so the like time anything. is well spent. You you go down a path and you say, that's not quite right. You talk and socialize the concept with people and they say, well, maybe you could tweak this. And that's gotten us to kind of where we are now. So, you know, high level, we can talk more of the details of the platform and all that. Sure. But high level, uh, how, do, how do you envision this working going forward? So, you know, John Doe wants to become, a, an, a, you know, a phase two participant, we'll call okay. it, okay. or a technical person, sales. Sure. How does it work? So What's he, it, what does he do? So here's essentially how it works is that um, it's a what we call a member based community. Okay. Right? So you think about um, you would go and apply for membership. So you just kind of go online. You provide this information about yourself. Um, at this point, someone would reach out to you and talk to you and get a feel for what you're all about, what your skill sets are, what you're wanting to do um, and get all that information because we also we want this to be successful for you as well. So yeah. it's important that we make sure that everything's aligned, but they would apply, we would go through it. And if it looks like this is a good fit and, and keep in mind that one of the, the interesting things about it is that how you participate in it, it's a range, right? Because you can participate um, part-time and that can mean only occasionally, let's say you're a technical person and you want to earn some extra income, but that's really all it is. I want some extra income. Well, you could participate and work on projects or help people with pre-sales only part-time you have other folks that may say hey i want to do this kind of full-time um i'm through with whatever my other job is this is how i'm going to earn my living and then kind of the top tier would be okay not only am i doing this but within this this phase two concept and when this within this community i'm going to start building out my virtual team so essentially they sign up once they get accepted then you get into the platform itself you build out your profile and now all the resources are available for you so what the resources that those kind of are the i guess first and foremost would be all the other members all the other like-minded people out right. there that are trying to do this you're all out there now in this community and you can start to collaborate and work together and depending on what you want to do as you know prescriptive we've got a wide range of technologies that we can offer technologies and solutions you now kind of have access to those things so if if you uh, let's say you're a salesperson and you wanted to participate and go out and do this well okay now we do cisco of course hp dell we represent all these products you can go out then and and position those and kind of do your own thing and you'll be as successful as you're capable of right so right? you get to pick the resource if you have a, a project that's networking we have some you'd have someone on the bench that in our in the team correct that is an expert at that you can use as a resource absolutely okay. and, and the way that it kind of works is if you think about um you know again you're a sales rep you have a customer let's say and you know that it's a network opportunity you can if you already know somebody in the community you can just reach out to that person directly and say hey i've got this opportunity and the concept that we use is called teaming. And all that really means is that, hey, we're gonna to come to some agreement on who's gonna do what. And then in this case, let's say you're trying to sell a solution. If it gets sold, how do the, uh, how do the uh, funds from that sale get distributed? So you could go and you could reach out directly to people you already know. Yeah. And, and, and we think that will happen. Yeah, I think, I think so too. If you're working with, this is my network guy. I work with him all the time, him or her. Um, we've got a good relationship. Customers love this person on um, partner. But if you didn't, you could also just post it within the platform and say, hey, everybody, I've got this opportunity. Here's kind of what it looks like. Here's what I'm looking for in terms of a resource. Here's what I'm going to want them to do. And here's what I'm willing to kind of do in return. I'm willing to give you 10% of the commission, 15% of the commission, or I think there's going to be quite a bit of services. I'm willing to let you know the technical person have the services. And you can just post it and let people respond. Or you can search. So you could come in and say, okay, 
show me everybody within Dallas Fort Worth that has networking expertise. You can get down to specifics of I want somebody that's got the Cisco badge on there right. and that they're available to go on site to meet with customers. And then you get a short list and you can start figuring out, OK, these guys going to work for me. That makes well, sense. It, it does make sense, actually. Okay. So, so I'm thinking, and I got to believe there's other things out there like this. But how is this different? I mean, from what you're, re, it sounds like you've done a lot of research on this. And so, how is this different some, than other freelance sites? Recorded? We'll call it that for sure. now. Sure. Um, and there are quite a few of them out there. And that's part of initially what drove us towards this idea, because you had so many people that were doing what they call gigs, right? People would work on the side. So Uber is probably the classic example of a gig. Yeah. And uh, one of the things was that when we looked at it, we found that you can earn a little bit of money with these gigs, but it's very difficult to actually earn a living with that type of approach. Right. So that was number one. Uh, number two, when you looked at the different platforms that were out there to do this kind of thing, Fiverr and Upwork and stuff like that, there were a couple of common traits. Um, one, it tended to be kind of a, a rush to the bottom. So if you sign up for one of those sites, you're in effect competing with everybody else on that platform for that business. And a lot of the ways that you get that business is you keep lowering your oh, price. I see right? saying, yeah. And so the type of, of organization or company or customer that comes to that, they're typically looking for a deal. So that's number one. Second is they tend to be tasks or small things or somebody that one person can do, right? So it may be, build me a website. Well, if it's a modest website, that's one thing. What we were looking at was, okay, we primarily sell, sell to midsize organizations and above, right? Midsize and enterprise. Yep. And if somebody is looking for, you know what? I wanna refresh the entire uh, network and wireless infrastructure in my environment. Well, you don't really go and get a freelancer to do that. You really right. need a team. So with our idea was, okay, you don't so much compete with the other members as you collaborate so that you can go out and say, I've found this opportunity. I've got good relationship with these guys, but I need a project manager. Ultimately, when it goes down, I need somebody to go out and do wireless site surveys. I need somebody that can review all that architecture and maybe, you know what? Even though it's network and wireless, there's some security elements. Right. So I really need a security expert. And then what the customer wants is they want to acquire that all from a single source. And right. I think for some folks that do freelance, it takes them a little bit to understand that. But if you think about a lot of the technology things that we put out there, they're complicated and they're certainly complex to that end customer. He doesn't or she doesn't want you to come with them and tell them, hey, these are all the things that you should do. Now go translate what I told you and go buy that stuff. Right. That's that's more work for them. Yeah. They're just like, can you just get this for me? I, yeah. Tell me what I need and give me a price for it, and then you guys come and install it. Yeah, you want you want, yeah. I hate to even use this term, but one throat to choke, right? I mean, you, you want it to be, hey, I'm going to handle that for you, right. and I'll handle all the resources on the right. back end. Right. You don't need to know anything about. Well, that. and it works better, right? Because yeah. we've been in circumstances before where, um, you know, sometimes. Um, a customer may get it in their head that a certain provider always has the best price, right? right? Which we know that's not how it works, right? But they'll get it in their head that these guys always have the best price, but they don't have really good technical resources. So I'm going to buy from them and then I'm going to have somebody else implement it. And that sounds good, but a lot of the things that we do when you think about, you're not really just buying pieces. It's not like you're buying a car. You're typically buying a collection of capabilities and components that can be put together in all these different ways. Right. So having one guy come up with the vision for how it's all going to be put together and then handing it to somebody else with little interaction, a lot of cases to go and build it is not nearly as effective as I'm the one architecting it and going over the solution with you. And in the end, we actually go and implement it. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, we've all seen that Terry, right? Like the example is, you know, you, you, you buy all the hardware or something, all the commodity type stuff from one type of vendor, and then you all the services from another. But if that configuration isn't correct over here, people start doing this, Absolutely. right? People start pointing fingers. And I tell customers that, I mean, could you save a few hundred dollars by going there and going here? Right. But is it, in the end, is it really worth it to you? Well, obviously, I'm, I'm pretty biased. Sure, about it, right? I am too, as a matter of fact. <laughs> right. So I don't think it's worth it. And I've just seen better success once you find a, a good partner that you want to work with and you start opening 
open the doors, take down the walls a little bit and start having those conversations. And if you work with them over and over, they start to get the kind of the, the tribal knowledge that your internal team has. So they understand how you operate and they know all the little quirks nuances, and things about yes. your environment so that they become a better and better research. That's the way it should work. Yeah, now, it I doesn't agree. always, but it should. And that, that concept applies here too. Really, it should be similar in that it's the same people that get involved. Now, there will be, that won't always be the case, but it's not always the case in other scenarios today, yeah. right? So getting back to the phase two piece of, you know, people join, what else does, what else does phase two provide from an enablement standpoint? If someone joins, okay, now what, what do I do? So here's the thing that I think we want people to really understand about it. That's different. And that is that you're, it is a community, right? So one, you have to apply and that's not, you have to sign this agreement or you, or you can't get in like it is in others. It's an application, and we have to determine if this person can come in, right? Right. Um, there's a lot of other things that we have in place to kind of do quality control. But if you sign up, um, talked about the community that you have access to, you have the potential to earn a lot more um, because the the commissions that we will pay on sales is significantly higher right, yeah. than what you would get someplace else. So your earning potential is pretty high. Um, you've got other members that will bring you into different opportunities, but also we're doing uh, training. Uh, we've got labs that you can get access to. There's all types of events that we have out there. There's also this concept called bounties, which for me is, I, I like that one quite a bit and we didn't invent it. There are other things out there, sure. but if you think about as an organization and as a community, there are a lot of things that we need that everybody can kind of benefit from. So what we do is we come up with, okay, maybe it's, it could be a certification that we need somebody to get this certification because we've got, you know, work to do, or, Hey, this is what's really required to get us the competitive pricing that we need on these technologies. So we may put a bounty out there that says hey, somebody with this kind of skill set, if you can go get this certification, here's what we'll do. And it could be, you know, cash it could be sure. $500 could be a thousand dollars could be something smaller depending on what it is right because yeah. you've got some that are online training that takes you two hours and then there's another that I've got to invest for a week yeah so so that would be one you training. distribute all those certs throughout the group make it a little easy for everybody right because I know you know I've been at companies where you know I'm getting pinged to do certs every week right and just sometimes <laughs> it just is not enough time but if you spread those out yeah you're you're right. It, it's hard to get that um, if you have a smaller team. And, and the other benefit is if you're the one that goes and gets those certifications, then that business will start to kind of flow through you. So if you're one of the only guys that has a, a certification on a particular technology, if there's work that needs to be done around there, you're Bingo. one of the folks that can yeah. go out and do it. And, and on top of that, the technical side, you've got a mix of people that like doing different things. Right. So as an example, we're always looking for uh, marketing materials and content. So blogs, videos, um, different types of material, we could do bounties with those as well. So we may say, you know what, we've just signed up a new partner and really excited about where this is going to go, but we'd like to have some people go through it, produce some videos about that technology. And again, there's a reward for it. If you go and do this, here's the parameters. There's got to be, sure. you know, the yeah. fundamentals. But if you do it, you get this reward. And in the case of a, a video or a blog, if you think about it, let's say I'm a technical person and I put together a blog and a video on app dynamics, right? Well, the rest of that member community, if they come across an app dynamics opportunity and they're like, I need a technical person to go work with. Well, if you're the one that put the blog that they saw or the video that everybody likes, you're going to be one of the first people that they're going to reach out to and say, hey, you want to work with me on this? So I think there's there's inherent sure. benefits to it. Plus, you're getting, you know, just a, a flat out reward for just doing it. Yeah. No. So so walk me through a typical opportunity. You know, Terry, Terry Murray's a, a rep at, at uh, phase two prescriptive data right. solutions. You find an opportunity and. Walk me through one extreme to the other. Like you don't need any help from sure. anybody. You can sure. come in, you can you can sell this deal from start to finish. You don't need any any resources internally. What that looks like if you if you're comfortable talking about commissions and things of that sure. sort, versus hey, I need 
a network resource on this or I need a secure, some security help on this? How does that impact their commissions? So if you, let's say you find that opportunity, one of the first things you would do is you would go into the platform itself and you would register it. Just like you would register with the vendor, right? And and what we're doing there is, again, we're talking about collaboration, not competition. We don't want two people both competing over the same piece of business. So you register it, it goes through a process, and if it's open, if it's not one that somebody else already has, now you're the registration holder, and you're the only one that can then ask for quotes, you're the only one that can really do anything with that opportunity. So if you're somebody that's that's already pretty technical and you've got the knowledge based on this area and you even are comfortable doing the delivery of it, then you're, you're okay running it solo and you can get up to 70% commission on that opportunity. So whatever it is that you sell, here's the, the gross margin that's made on it. Obviously you take out if there's shipping and things right. like that, but when you get down to what was the profitability of this deal, up to 70%. And that assumes though that you're doing everything, right? All prescriptive's doing is billing. That Correct. Just- we're billing it, we're pr- placing the order, we're carrying the credit, we're making sure that we all the documentation is placed. Um, we'll have the master service agreements and things like that. All the things that put those businesses together that we can transact together, the insurance requirements, those things are gonna be put in place. But you're pretty much carrying it from there and you, you can make a lot of money if you can do that. So that would be one example that I think people could do very well. Um, You may have others that, um, they again they find the opportunity and they register it, but they're primarily working in a sales role. They got a lot of relationships, they know a lot of people, and they can go out and talk to people and uncover an opportunity. But they may quickly realize that okay, I need somebody to come and help do the discovery, really figure out exactly what this customer needs. And then ultimately, you know, building the configurations, all those sorts of things, when they are ultimately make a purchase, hopefully, then somebody's got to have that statement of work on the implementation services, knowledge transfer, all those things. So what they would do is if they, again, if they already know a resource, they already have somebody that this is my, my Cisco network guy, this is my Cisco collab guy that I reached to you can just reach out to them and you would have a teaming agreement put in place. And all the teaming agreement is, it's digital. And this person starts it off, sends it to you and says, hey, here's the opportunity. Here's kind of what I think it's gonna look like when it's all said and done. Here's what I'm offering up as the split. So I get 70%, I'm willing to give you X percent of that. You have the, as the technical person getting it, you have the ability to say, well, it looks like it's gonna be a lot more work um, so if you bump it up, I'll do it. But at that amount, I'm probably not going to do it because I'm working with a couple of other folks that have brought me in on opportunities and I'm getting a little bit better from those folks. Right. Or, okay, I can do it for that amount, but then I want all the PS, I want all the professional sure. services, you know, I can do it. But once they agree, it kind of gets stamped in there and now it, it's, it's in place and it really tells the platform itself ultimately when this transaction gets done who gets paid what sure and that's really what it's for right and we certainly have uh, processes in place for almost if you think about like an arbitration if there's some sort of issue in there um but the idea is you really want to have that in place and it's pretty flexible and in terms of what goes into that agreement we don't approve or disapprove a an agreement that's up to the parties now we're certainly going to be mining them to try and figure out what kind of things are people doing um, to figure out are there things about the way that uh, things are structured that's putting maybe some friction in there that we don't want um, and also looking for bad behavior to be honest and it's really the two big things will be internally when a when a team is done because you sold something to the opportunities lost we survey everybody and we've get that information back and we look at, well, how things go on. And we're looking for, again, okay, every time it turns into this scenario, maybe we need to tweak something here. These are the scenarios that are working great. But if we get, you know, this person's done 10 different teams and 10 different people have come back and said, no, I would never work with that person again. That's a problem, that's right? A problem. Yeah, and was, we have to do something about that it. That was actually one of my questions I was going to say is, obviously, you know, there's a, there's a, a vetting process when someone joins, but... Right. 
you know, you're not going to have everyone that's going to be lovey dovey and get along right. with everybody and work well with everybody. So what do you do in a situation like that? I mean, just, uh, it's going to depend on what it is, but it's almost like you would think if that person was, um, worked for a company traditionally, right. You look at it and go, okay, you're, this isn't going really well. Let's talk about how we can make this better and how maybe you sure. can change the way you're interacting with other people a little bit. And if you can do that and you're still contributing and whatnot, great. But if it doesn't change, then yeah, you're probably going to be out. Yeah. And that's, I think it has to be that way. And the only place where we're even more extreme is we're also going to survey the end clients. So sure. we're going to give you some guidelines on here's the way that we suggest you engage with your clients. Here's the way that you should do things in terms of communication. But at the end of the day, one of the things that we know is that you have certain customers that they don't want all the formality. They right. want, they know this guy is their guy. They're going to tell him what to do. He's going to come out he's going to handle it. And he knows enough to let me know when I need to know something. Right. You have others that are like, when is the actual kickoff time? And who's going to be sending the notes? And they want it very formal. So we have the freedom that you can do it those ways. But again, at the end, we're going to survey that customer. And these are all going to be using the, the net promoter score. Sure. Right. And so when those scores come back, if it's not where it needs to be, then we're going to figure out why. And it could be a case where, no, the, the, he did great. I didn't have any issues with that. It was counting. Boy, they sent me the wrong invoice or this yeah. or that. Okay, we got to go back and address that. But if it's from the customer says, well, no, the guy didn't show up, didn't do what he was supposed to do. We're going to have a pretty short leash on, hey, you can't be a part of this because we're not. Well, your Look, reputation's at, at risk here. hundred yeah, percent. We, right. We're we're working with businesses. These are going to be critical um, types of projects, and it's not acceptable to have projects fail. You can have challenges with them, and we can do some things to straighten those out. Um, but if you're not able to perform at the level that we expect, then you're just out. And yeah. that's the only thing that I can really. Uh, do is that we, we're hoping that there's enough value in being a member of this community and all the things you can do with it, the networking that it opens up, all the earning potentials, the training that it's important to you to not get the boot at sure. the end of the day. So who would be, what would be the typical profile you would look for? So it's going to be a, a range uh, depending on how you want to participate late into their sales career, but they've got some clients that buy from them and will presumably continue to buy from them. Yep. They need a little bit of help, but for the most part, hey, I got these accounts. I'm not really out there cold calling. I'm not trying to find new accounts. I'm just going to do this. Good fit for them, right? Because, right. okay, great. Just come over here and do your thing. Um, if somebody is really saying, you know what I want to do? I want to go over there and I want to build something and I want to make a bunch of money. So I'm willing to put in 60, 70 hours a week to kind of build this thing out. It's a good fit. Obviously, if you're going to be doing that, you can't be working full time someplace else right. to put in that type of effort. So uh, that's that's certainly part of it. I think um, folks that are technical and they already working somewhere else, but it's non competitive, right? So they're not working at a competitor to prescriptive data solutions. They're not working at one of our vendor partners, uh, and they're not working at a customer, right? That would be right. You can't come over here and sell your the company you work for a bunch of products. <laughs> you you that's called double dipping. By yeah, the way. <laughs> that that's not acceptable. But if you're kind of a self starter and you're kind of anxious to go down that path, I think sales reps can do extremely well. Yeah. And you have to think about to some extent, it's the same sales reps that would be okay with straight commission. That's basically what it is as yeah. far as they're concerned. If you can't handle that and that doesn't work for you understand right. it's not going to work for some people probably not a good fit right. this isn't for everybody it's not for everybody and the technical people similar the technical people are often used to a very nice paycheck coming in yeah. that's not part of this and what we do know is that people will i think they will come in over time so they'll dip their toes in they'll start to get kind of engaged in a few things and it's almost like they're developing Okay, I've got these relationships. Maybe I have an account or two, and I can start to see where this I've got go. some money coming in, and I can build this out. And from a platform perspective, we're also doing everything we can to enable those people, even down to opportunities. Right? We're just an example right now. We're we've got probably three or four different campaigns that it's not you know hundreds, but we get these opportunities that come in. We can take those, look at the skill set, 
almost like if I was trying to team up, who's out there that has the skill set, has the expertise, and has signed up that, yeah, I'd like to handle these things and provide those folks an opportunity. Yeah, that's always nice. I think so, because yeah. that's that's one of the hardest things, especially for uh, your, your technical people. And it's generally why the salespeople do so well if they can go out and find new accounts yeah. and get in there. The value of finding the right account and getting in front of the right person at the right time it's amazing. You put the top 10 technical people in the world in a room, nothing happens, right? right? Until a salesperson no, I mean, says, here's finding, where you go. We've talked about this several times. You're finding net new business, new opportunities, yeah. the hardest thing, especially the, in this crazy time with the pandemic where you can't right. visit with customers. And so that personal interaction is just done over Zoom. A little right. bit tougher. Right. A little bit tougher to do. It, it absolutely is tougher. And um Nothing we can necessarily do to, to kind of fix that, right? Not um, right now, anyway. Not yeah. right now. But yeah. one of the good things is that uh, we have seen that if, if there was a positive to come out of it, I think customers and organizations in general have gotten a little bit more comfortable that, you know what, a lot of these things can do remote, and I can build the relationship and, and do those sorts of things. Sales is probably still the toughest one because I think people like to buy from people they've met in person yep. and whatnot. Um, but certainly possible. And, yeah. and and people still have projects going on. Prescriptive, last year, best year ever. And that's, you know, when March came around and the pandemic hit, I had all my plans about what we were going to do that year. And I'm like, well, maybe I'll just set these aside and let's just, let's but, see how it goes. But the company grew. The company grew. And yeah. there was a little dip for a while where it seemed like customers were going, okay, let's see how this shaked out. And then it was, let's carry on. I'll throw in a shameless plug for you, Terry. Uh, you made the uh, CRN uh, top 150 fastest growing bars in America. Came in number six. Yeah, that was 360 percent growth. Or, yeah, uh, yeah. So. And they measured over a, uh, a few years, and that was pretty. Um, that was pretty exciting for me watching myself and this team build to that point. And we've gotten some other types of awards but when i looked at them I was, i've never heard of this and I, I actually think you want me to pay for this this doesn't feel genuine yeah, at all right but crn in our world that's one that people follow yep. and um you know just because you're on there doesn't necessarily mean you do great work but you're doing something to build the organization right. uh, when we submitted all our paperwork certainly didn't think that we were going to come in sixth so that was pretty exciting uh the one funny thing about that paul is that as you know Customers don't read computer reseller news. That's not what they read. Who reads it are vendors. So it's not like all of a sudden customers started calling and going, hey, you guys are growing. I want to work with you. It was every vendor out there calling saying, hey, helps. you should sell these products. It does. Because those does. partnerships are just as important as customer relationships. A hundred percent. Because the vendors the vendors have to trust you that, hey, yep. you can. I, I know you can handle this job from start to finish. Right. I can entrust you with this and I don't have to babysit it. I think that's a big one, actually. It, it is a big one. That's the, you know, you're adding value on multiple ends, right? You're adding value to the customer end and then on the vendor side. And so, uh, and you, you do want some opportunities. The vendors have places where they've got programs, they've got different promotions where they can be selective about who's going to participate in those. So you want them to pick yeah. you, right? And that's happening with you with prescriptive at this point. Vendors are coming to you saying, Hey, we know you have a quality team. We want to invest in you. We're willing to do X, Y, and Z for you guys to generate more opportunities. It's been phenomenal and can't say enough about the vendors and, and how much they've um, assisted us and promoted us and helped us in this growth, all the different things that had to happen. Uh, not just the, the the manufacturers, but the the distributors as well. Yep. Doing all the things that we need to do to uh, continue to grow the company and be successful. So we've we've been very fortunate. So, who can join? What are the parameters around? Like, if someone from like Venezuela wants to join, could they? Not today. Okay. So right <laughs> now it's uh, so we're not international yet. No, and uh, just there's a lot of different. Um, well, there's a lot of different legal issues and things like that that have to be worked sure. out. Um, and really, our, right now, we're primarily focused on Texas. That's where we are. Uh, but but North America in general, and with, with some exceptions, but for the most part, uh, in the U.S., um, we'll see about how we can potentially leverage international folks out there. But um, an, 
what we were initially trying to solve was really how do we get the folks that we work with in these communities that we know, give them that opportunity to go and do these things. And we've got all that figured out. The international piece, we really don't have that figured out at this point. And, and quite frankly, even though we want to see things grow, we're not wanting to grow it just for the sake of growing it. So we're not trying to say, how do I get this to 100,000 members participating? Right. It's more, how do I get hundreds of people participating? Because if you think about that, if you've got 100 or 200 active folks, maybe you've got a good team in all the NFL cities out there. Sure. They can be very successful and you can maintain that that culture where people are of similar mindset, at least from the standpoint of why we're here and what we're doing. Yeah. Right. So. So I think, you know, thinking thinking just up the top of my head here, I mean, I think if someone has a, some business that they can continue to do. Right. They basically have their own business without having their own business. Correct. In other words, you know, because you, Pete, prescriptive will do, be the backbone of, like you said, ordering, quoting, all that. And they and they have their own business, but really you guys do do all the billing and, and ordering and all that stuff. Correct. Right? Yeah, and so that it's a was, nice setup. I think so. I mean, uh, some of the folks that we have that are on board from a sales perspective, um, that was a big attractive piece to them. Was okay, I can come over and do that piece that I'm real interested in. I don't have to worry about all these other pieces. And and we've talked to some folks that will be coming over that maybe have been doing a little bit of business on the side. And there were just challenges with it. You, you turn into, okay, now I'm spending all my time dealing with the back end invoicing and dealing with credit and all those sorts of things. You're also, if you're small, if you want to sell technologies, well, you don't have the people to get the, the certifications that you need. You don't have the credit line. Right. So it's very difficult. It's hard to do. And then if it, and if it's just you or somebody else, well, you can't really go on vacation because you're having to handle it all the time. With this one, you could kind of team up with people and we take some of that burden off of you to just allow to what you want to focus on. The other one I would mention that's really a good candidate that we've seen is, let's say that you do um, consulting in a particular area. Let's say you do uh, security and compliance. And so you help organizations really determine where they are. You help them with all their compliance policies and you help them build out a, a security practice or program for their organization. So you're helping them this is how security is going to be handled at this organization. And you're doing pretty well with that. Well, those conversations almost always end up with, okay, great. Love it. Now it's time to put in the different technologies. Can you just get, sell me the technologies that I want and implement it? Well, you don't necessarily want to build all that team up, but again, within phase two, you can team up with other folks right. and like, absolutely. I would put in these types of uh, equipment or these solutions Here's the guys that are going to come in and actually implement it for you. It, it's kind of a beautiful thing, and you expand yeah, what you flexible. can earn. Yeah, and and the customer's happy with it; they like it more. The other thing is within that community, you're you're able to kind of advertise your services, so that now another sales rep or another technical person says, "Hey, I work with this customer. I kind of manage all their firewalls, and I, I take care of their security." What they want now is somebody to come in and create documents. They really want some compliance documents and stuff like that. That's not what I do. Right. I like to be on the keyboard doing all the rules. Hey, can you come over here? Let me introduce you to these guys. See where it goes. You team up on that. So you open up another opportunity with folks that are actively engaged within organizations that you want to work with. And that's the big, the big magic of it. And you're really encouraged also to do your best because if you don't do well in any community because of lack of effort or whatever, yeah. eventually that starts to spread. Just like I think about when you go to pick a restaurant and you look at the Yelp reviews and if there's a couple of them that all have five stars and then there's one with one star, that one star one's going away. Yeah, you exactly. know, it's just yeah, no, so it's similar point. kind of concept, I think. So you, you said you've, uh, you're just rolling this out now and you do have members at this point. Correct. You do. How's that Correct. working out so far? So far, so good. And it's been, you know, um, relatively modest because we're working through and making sure everything works and finishing up the platform. Um, but we have had, you know, at this point, people operating in that mode um, over four million dollars in revenue generated. Yeah. It's a, and you kind of slow rolled this out, right? Correct. Just kind of dip your tone, making sure that I mean, I think the last thing you would want is have 50 people join. Right. And the platform crater and not work. And then it just 
So you kind of you get a few people out there seeing how it works and then trying to grow it from there. A hundred percent, right? Okay. We have to test it out a little bit more, make sure it works. And early on, if you would imagine what we were doing was on paper. So right. these were all the things that were happening, but it was kind of on paper. We actually had to build out the platform to take those things from paper and put them into effect. And that's what we've done now. And so spent quite a bit of time and effort and investment to get all those things in place and to start putting in more of the resources that we would need to kind of support that as it comes on. Right. Um, so even what we're talking about now is what I would define as a little bit of a soft launch in that, sure. hey, we want to bring in some of these folks. I think initially, um, it's not that we won't, we're not going to bring in people that we don't know, but a big chunk of the people coming on early on will be people that we already know. Sure, there's and a comfort level there. We, yeah, they know what it is. They've been talking, and in some cases, they've helped us shape it because we've said, hey, here's the concept, here's what we're looking at, and we've got questions about this or that, and they kind of give feedback that says, well, this works, that doesn't work, and we've tweaked it. Um, so that will kind of you know, naturally evolve, and then we'll start expanding out, going into uh, other regions, other territories, and... Um, kind of growing from there yeah that, i mean that's a beauty of it uh, i mean you can really work in anywhere in the continent or united states right. and it's really you're not tied to anywhere obviously some legalities like we talked about sure. going to foreign countries but uh sounds like uh sounds like you're off and running terry well it's i i hope so and it's yeah. it's very exciting because like i said this is something that we've been working towards for some time and, and you know you, you kind of mentioned the the crn the six fastest growing which is which is great, but that also means that all of us spend a lot of time growing that part of the business, which that's that's fantastic. But at the same time, this was always the direction that we really wanted to go. We wanted to do something different. We wanted to figure out how do we empower people and enable them to, to go out and be successful, live kind of the lifestyle that they want. And that's what this does maybe a little bit better than prescriptive does. Yeah. Um, prescriptive works well in particular, if you like working, if you like working <laughs> hard, we got lots of work to do. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit more traditional, but everybody on our team knows about it. They understand how it works. They understand how they're going to fit into that. And they're all excited about yeah. it as well. Well, this can really scale. Yeah. That's really the goal, right? I mean, because if you have to have every person be a PDS employee, it's just a, you're talking insurance and all the everything to, to, to navigate through that. Yeah, and that that's certainly be totally clear. That is a challenge, right? When I look at the traditional approach to a reseller, right? And so let's say that prescriptive next year decides that you know what I think would be good. I think there's a good opportunity to go to this region, or there's a good opportunity to go after this technology. At a most basic level, if I just said I think that we could build something around a tech technology i'm going to invest 350 four hundred thousand dollars something like that by the time you put all the people and yeah. resources behind it and all i'm doing is placing a bet yeah. and hoping that it's going to be successful and i can only place so many bets right so i add two people and then see how that goes but it's very slow um and in particular when we look at it we see some areas and we know you know what this right here that is an area that customers are really clamoring for. They need help. They need assistance. Well, it's hard to kind of address that. Whereas with this model, again, if I think about what we could do with the bounties, we can kind of come back and do it to that extreme as well to sure. say, hey, we think that there's a good opportunity to go after this space and really do some things. We're willing to put bounties out there for an individual or team to kind of help us build that out. And then you can kind of go after it. So I think it allows us to, move more much more quickly oh, much more and agile adapt much than, more agile at that, yeah, at that point yeah I, so i think that works in a way that we couldn't do it if we just had to shell it all out of our pockets to take you know and pay for all these things and again there's some people that would look at it and say well you should have to pay for it and it's that's fine you don't have to join again right? this you've said it earlier this is not for everybody right and this is a certain sound a subset of people out there right. that this is a good fit for right and, and, and for them it'll be great and right. if it's not for you hey best of luck wherever you're that's you're right going and what you're doing well that and that's a good point because you don't want to sell this to somebody under false pretenses right, right. you want to be straight up front and that i've known you a long time terry and you're one of the most stand-up guys that i know in the business and so i think people want to make sure they understand the rules when they come on board right, right? and know what they're getting themselves into so yeah and i appreciate that and and i think we're we're definitely, that's part of the onboarding process. And the onboarding process is, there are certainly 
the platform has that built in in terms of a, a path that it walks you through. But again, if you think about the idea of a community, it's more than that in that as members come on, it's it's on us to help those people be successful and help them to yep. get going in this in this world. And I think we're going to part of it will be to continue that philosophy as you add other members. Well, it won't necessarily be a PDS person now that's helping mentor you or get you really going. It will be other members, Safety right? Maybe somebody members. that, yeah, somebody that maybe sponsored you. So when you right. went to apply, you said, yeah, I know this guy, he works there and he's been very successful put in your application. We'd look at it and go, Oh, okay, let's go talk to him and see what he says. I think the guy would be a great fit. Want him to be a part of it. So there's even rewards that we can put sure. in place yeah. for you to mentor Makes this sense. person, kind of get them ramped into you it. Know, I think one of the ultimate goals, and I know you've thought about this is, you know, we want to, we want to make sure that the customer facing uh, piece is going to be kind of look like one cohesive team. Right. How are you ensuring that so that, you know, like I think you may have touched on earlier that you go to a customer and say, well, I'm going to handle the storage piece, but this other guy over here is going to do next thing. You know, the customer's dealing with 10 different people. How are you going to ensure that the customer facing piece is unified? So a couple things, one, just so make this clear, cause it, it can be a bit confusing, but all the members of phase two are part of prescriptive data solutions. Okay. That's what your email address is going to say. That's Got it. we don't treat them. They're not different from the rest of the resources, right? And if you think about the reason why that's in place, we have to have all those vendor relationships. We have to have all Got the it. credit in place. That's what prescription Makes has. Makes complete sense. Yep. But when you go and you have an opportunity, and it's really more than that, you really are registering an account. So let's say, Paul, you went and registered that account. That's your account. So it doesn't really work any different than now at prescriptive. You may pull this guy in to kind of help with um, the storage side of things. And then you may pull a different person in from the security side it's still yours. You're right. the quarterback. You're running everything. And even those people that are on your team, they're not allowed to go around right. and do things like that. And since you're the quarterback, if they're not doing what you need them to do or it's not performing, you don't have the team with them anymore. Yeah, because that's important, that relationship with the customer, right? They can't, right. They, you know, I've worked at some big companies where they'll say, hey, I got a call from this guy last week. He said he's my rep. Well, he's your networking rep. Right. And this guy's your store. And so it's confusing to the customer sometimes. Right. So that's good that you put something, you put some thought into that as well. Yeah, because we don't want that. And yeah. it's, I mean, some of our partners operate that way. And I kind of understand it because they've got such a broad portfolio. Yeah. But I just, for me, I, I think people like to have that one person. And, and quite honestly, if you look at organizations and customers that have some of the best experiences, one of the things that I think is sometimes overlooked or underestimated is the role that that lead salesperson plays in making sure that you're managing all these things. So it's yep. bringing the right things to you, but also shielding you from things that, okay, you're just going to confuse the customer with this <laughs> step back. We're yeah. going down this path and the experience that they have makes a big difference. And that's typically why they'll, they'll keep coming back to you and coming back to you. So the experience should be the same. And that's the other difference that I, I probably should have hit on before is that, a lot of these other freelance sites, they're job boards. Yeah. And so a customer just goes out there and says, all right, let me see if I can find somebody for 60 bucks an hour to do this work. And they start putting it in there. Ours isn't really that way. If you think about um, the engagement with the customer is the same way we've always engaged. It's going to be a lot of times still going to be that same four legged sales call, right? Yeah. There's going to be the salesperson that has it. There's going to be his uh, right hand man. That's their technical person. And they kind of go after it. I'm not asking the customers to change the way that they do anything. Right. As far as they know, they work with prescriptive and prescriptive is very responsive and they seem to have great competitive pricings on all products. And they've got seemingly endless supply of, of resources. Right. Yeah, and, 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 and something that's important too is accountability, right? Right. Like if, if you've got a group, a team that you're working with and you got a point guy, right. You know, the customer's got to know that, when it hits the fan, and it does hit the fan on occasion, right. we both know that nothing's right. perfect. That he's got to he's got to know that he can go to you and say, "Hey, we've got a problem here," and you're going to belly up to the table. Well, and that's you, you're going to make it happen. Yeah, and that's certainly part of it. And if you think about kind of the team that we have today, certainly on the technical side and whatnot, that's one of the reasons why that's never going to change. Right? We're going to have those types of people that are at the very top of what it is that they do. That we're not going to let those things happen. Now, there's there's 
there are quality control processes to kind of keep it from ever getting to that point. Right. But if those types of things do come up, we've got ways to address them. And some of those would be, okay, once everything is back in place and working the way it's supposed to, how did it get to this place initially? Sure. And so that really where it comes back to the vetting process when you bring them on. Um, as I mentioned, the badges, the badges are critical because what the badges do is it, it is either it comes directly from the vendor. So let's say you're a technical person, you have a certification. We're going to honor that certification, right? right? But there's also more uh, ones that are specifically tied to us. That is our, our um, view of where you are in your level of expertise. And that does impact what are the things that you can architect and what are the things you can implement? Because you can't have just anybody saying, Oh yeah. It's the same. I do this other stuff and it's the same thing. I'll go out there and do it. I mean, if you think about it, one, you're going to have problems. And then two, when they call support, our vendor is going to come to to me and the rest of the leadership and go, who is this person? What are they doing? (laughs) I see him on LinkedIn. He works at Dunkin' Donuts. Why, why is he here? So that, that's not going to happen. Um, and we're being very particular about, we really just want, um, outstanding technical people to be a part of this. Um, because it's our reputation. Yeah, no, I, I've said this a thousand times. I mean, a, a sale, I'm a sales guy, but you can only be as good as your technical team. Right. I mean, just because really, when the rubber meets the road, they, they're going to do all the configuring, they're going to do the implementation, they're going to they're going to make it all work. Right. Right. And uh, I think that's one of prescriptive strongest suits. Some of the strongest technical folks in the industry are with us, and that's how we're winning a lot of business, actually, in my mind. I, you know? I think you're right, and I you think know? some of the same. I mean, they they obviously get a paycheck, which is a little different. But some of the reasons why they're successful here and what attracted them to prescriptive would still apply to phase two. And that's, as you guys know, our technical people get a fair amount of freedom. They go with you on things, on calls, meet with customers. We're not dictating how they do things or which technology they recommend. And we can do that because of the caliber of the folks that we brought in. And so they have some freedom. And when you what you see um, is the guys that are really a good fit, they excel. There's a, there's a guy on our team, uh, John Parker, who is just, he's outstanding. And, um, we enable him and, you know, kind of tell him where we want to go. But, but John just takes the stuff and runs with it. And I don't have to go to John and say, Hey John, you know, you're responsible for your accounts. You need to make sure that's just inherent. Yeah. That's just just the way it is. And so I think you would have that same concept. And the fact that, it's really merit based and you're only you get paid on outcomes would weed out some of those people that maybe aren't very good yeah. because they know I'm not going to do real quickly. well. Yeah. yeah. And technical people are pretty good about, you know, you put 10 of them in the room together pretty quick. It turns into, okay, we figured out who the weak link is <laughs> over here. This guy's been, you know, just so talking about nonsense. So, so Terry, I appreciate you, you know, kind of explaining the phase two. I think it's a great opportunity for a lot of folks out there. If someone wants to find out more information on this, where do they go? Besides so, calling you directly, besides buddy, calling which they the, can do. Yeah, there will. Uh, so when the podcast actually comes out, there will be a link on there that they can go to. There's an explainer video that walks you through kind of some of the concepts that we've talked about. There's an FAQ out there that you can get some uh, some questions answered, and there'll be an application link that you can go and apply, and then we'll get it, and somebody will reach back out to you, schedule a time to talk, and kind of go from there and answer any questions you have about it at the same time as they're finding out a little sure. bit more about you, um, and making sure that it's a good match all around. That's the big thing. And then yeah. once you get in, especially the people that get in now, um, a lot of attention from the rest of the team sure. because we want to make sure that this is su- successful, make sure that it works. And frankly, even when we look at the team that we have now, we're growing. We have so many things going on that we could, we could use more people. We yeah. have more work. We have more opportunities than, than we can handle on our own. Cool. So. Well, anything uh, before we uh, finish any, any last comments for, for the folks out there that uh, are thinking about maybe joining considering joining sure i i would encourage you if you've thought about it if you thought about taking some sort of leap like this and having a little bit greater control over of your life and your lifestyle and things like that never been a better time to do it i think this gives you a good way to kind of go down that path Uh, at a minimum i would encourage you to fill out an application and let's talk about it uh if you we have that discussion but you decide not quite yet that's fine we'll put you on the list of kind of the the waiting list, yeah. stay in communication with you, and you never know when it comes up. 
Um, but very excited and really thankful for you uh, inviting me on the podcast. Oh, thanks for being here, Terry. Well, I guess that's a wrap for Business Brains and the Bottom Line. Until next time, have a good day, everybody. Thank you.